Alright guys, welcome back to another build series. It's taken a bit longer to get out this one, so the reasoning behind all this is all the work we got done at a well-known business, everything that went in, literally everything that went in, was not done to professional standards. So we had a lot of issues, a lot of problems and tedious things that came out of this which were really, really annoying. They weren't uh, ideal, but um, we got through it. I'll run through all the little things that we got uh, added at the business, and yeah, we'll show you what we got. So what we've done in the rear end, we've changed the coils out, and we put airbags in. So the coils, we've gone with the Pedders Track Rider coils. So they're basically a heavier duty sort of coil that they use for their GVM upgrade. So it's at the higher end of, of sort of you know sturdiness so we've got them in the back and then we've got airbag man suspension so we got the sleeves in there which are working absolutely phenomenal they're the great setup we had them in the ranger as most of you know um and even from the ranger to this before having them and then after having them it just changes everything like the ride quality is so much better it's great because inside we've got the little remote so i can remotely put them up and put them down with a little dial that tells me what the PSI is. So I run them at about probably 50 a PSI and that seems to level the car out just really nicely and gives me a good ride. Right, so with the Patrol, if you know, they're all wishbone suspension, so they're all independent. So a big thing with these is you have to have every single corner uh, looked at for when you do your wheel alignments. So this was one of the issues we had where the tire wasn't aligned properly and was sitting inside the guard. It was quite cambered and it was tilted out of the front. So that gave us a lot of grief and a lot of problems on dirt roads because it tried to crab. Um, but it has now been fixed. It is all flush. It's like it was when we got it off the showroom floor. So I'm no uh, alignment expert, but for me, common sense wise, after getting it all realigned properly, what we decided to do was to camber them out just slightly because obviously when that caravan goes on, it's going to bring them back down and really align them properly so you don't want to be chewing insides and outsides of your tyres when you've got the caravan on or the caravan off so we've gone for that setup so far so good going forward we uh we hope that that keeps itself together and we can get the life that we want out of these these new tyres for the 4B fit out setup that we have we got a couple of pigeonholes either side so on this side we got smaller pigeonholes that we got little doors so I like to put a, all my small gear in there and then on the other side it's actually a lot larger and they're open-ended sort of they, they don't have lids on them so I decided to put the airbag man compressor system on this on this side here um, simply just for there's no lid on top I could put one on later but it allows me to access what I need to especially with uh, pumping up tires and using the the, the the airline itself so it all fits in there like perfectly snug like it's even got a slightly bit of room on either side so you can really sort of play around and jimmy things if you really need to uh, so that's in there and i've got the connection for the hose literally just at the top here so it's almost flush with the top there and then what airbag man does they give you this little nifty bag so it's just your uh your gauge that goes onto your tires and it comes with a coil Oop. Yep. <laughs> so it comes with your coil uh, hosing which reaches quite a fair way but not quite enough for uh, our caravan being so long so I might have to uh, get an extra one or something somewhere down the track and also too I found out while we're uh, up at the Cape they give you a nice little bag and it's got a couple of attachments in there so it's good there's one there for balls like soccer balls footballs that sort of stuff they got some uh, thinner ones. So I had some girls come up to us at Elon Beach and they had a blow up mattress and they didn't have a pump with them. And uh, they came over and asked us for help. And then I was like, oh yeah, I got a couple of attachments in the, the actual airbag the system. So I threw on one of those attachments straight into the bloody mattress. And yeah, within about 15 minutes, the whole thing was blowing up. So it comes in handy, definitely comes in handy. So compressors in the back. I got my hosing in the back here with my gauges. And then inside the car, which I'll take you in a second, I'll show you the manual side of it with the remote and the gauge that sits inside my cigarette lighter. Here's the fun part. This is probably my most favorite bit of the whole 
everything we got set up and put into the car is the airbag man remote system so this is the little remote that comes with it it's just got a little slidey lid on it it's uh two big buttons two little buttons so the big one is to pump up and the little one is to pump down and i've got the monitoring system which literally just it just plugs in your cigarette lighter like it's that simple and you can adjust it to obviously whatever it suits you and where you can see it so at the moment they're at uh, about 9 psi a bag so left and then right so basically if I just want to pump them up it literally takes seconds so I'll just pump the left up look at that 46 psi with like three seconds or two seconds of pushing that button and you can probably hear the the compressor in the back of there kicking in and put the other one up so you can see how quick that is i've been told that you can slow that down with a valve that can be put into the system that slows the airflow in so you can literally just sit there a little bit longer and really get it to where you want but being the first time and just the way it was and i have been using it since it's just become an, an everyday ordeal for me so it's it's i'm quite used to it now and it is literally within seconds so it's a great little system i just leave this up on my uh, sun visor and on the driver's side there and just pull it out when i need to hitching and unhitching i'll just put them back down again so you can hear the air coming out of that compressor again back to uh, 10 psi biggest one for us was the tow pro going into this car because unfortunately we didn't have it in the ranger we should have legally we should have but we didn't so now having this in the new car it's been a new experience for me and learning how it works and how it doesn't work um, but the big issue what happened with this one was it wasn't wired properly when it went in so i never had the full potential of it even after it was put in professionally so it was quite sketchy and hairy at times uh, but we got through it and we survived which was grateful <laughs> um, but yeah so it's located down here at the front it's just in one of these little with the patrols you got heaps of little options here for buttons switches you got more over the other side here but it was a great spot for me to be able to look at it visually while i'm driving and to see when it was working and wasn't um, if i ever needed to push it it's literally there at my fingertips and i can just give that a quick quick flick um, but yeah so that's a really nice upgrade to have this is a, a legal requirement for any braked trailer that weighs over 750 kilos so anything underneath that you don't need one of these if you just got a little box tray and you're running down to the dump and things like that not an issue but anything over 750 kilos legally you do need a tow pro so it's just a safety thing it's a regulation and it's just a part of the law all right the next thing on the list was we got we had a seven pin uh, trailer plug on here originally but we opted for the 12 pin so they changed the 12 pin over and we got our two andersons in there obviously for the caravan which is ones for charging and then ones for esc electronic stability control um so just your standard Anderson plugs, 12 pin. But the funny thing was, when we first got this installed, uh, we hooked up the caravan and we were reversing into a, one of our first locations heading up to the Cape. And it wasn't until Sean was behind me and she looked at it and said, is your reverse lights working? And I was like, well, it's in reverse, it should be. And then we played around, we had a look at the wiring and a few other things. And apparently after all that investigating, patrols i don't know what other models do it as well but they don't have a reverse wire in their plug never knew that i just thought it was like a standard straight across the board uh, setup so you learn something new every day and saying that it's actually not a legal requirement to have a reverse and it wasn't until i noticed or found out about this information and started looking around the caravan park and like well probably 80 90 percent of caravans actually don't have reverse lights so i almost feel like <laughs> we don't need them on our van as well but they're there but they're never going to work anymore now because we don't obviously need it but then we don't have it either so yeah fun fact for you no reverse on patrols or most caravans probably a lot of people knew that but i didn't know that <laughs> another big thing that happened for us 
was when we left Cape Tribulation up at Daintree. We, as you know, if you've watched the videos, we went for the Bloomfield track. And if you know the Bloomfield track, a lot of people say it's quite a sketchy, hilly, just gnarly sort of track to take a caravan on. So for us, we want to make sure that everything was 110% before we did that. But just five minutes before, well, literally five minutes after we left the front gate of Cape Trib, we had the tow pro completely, you know, kick out on us. It was flashing red. And then we checked the car, the caravan and the ESC was red. So we had no ESC and no brakes. So talk about being even 10 times more nervous than what I already was, uh, literally leaving to go up the Bloomfield track. So what we did was I opened the bonnet and checked off the fuses, wiring, everything I could possibly check. And what I found was one of these main wires here for the Anderson plug for the ESC was actually just hanging out. We fixed it all up, we jimmed it all up and it actually lasted the whole trip all the way to the Cape and back, which was very, very good. It's not the business's fault. I'm not pointing fingers at anybody. Um, it just really came down to the person on the day and the job that they've done, which was unfortunate. We're lucky that uh, we got through such a full on trip being up at the Cape of all places. We came back uh, happy and alive. Um, but yeah, again, the business has been really good at uh, resolving all these issues and they've really gone out of their way to um, ensure that we are now happy and everything is working 100%. Righto, last but not least, the Rhino Rack. So this is a, a big one for us. We haven't had like a proper platform before. Um, if you've seen the Ranger before, we had uh, just your single Kings ones, just normal runners for your roof racks. So to have a platform has been really, really handy for us. Um, it's not only good for obviously max tracks, we got a spare wheel up here and I've got some uh, other pieces over here that I've put on so I can strap down timber and stuff which was really handy up at the Cape. Um, but the, yeah, this is the Pioneer platform from Rhino Rack. So it was a really good system. We are very, very happy with it. As you can see, it's quite strong. So anyone that doesn't know for the stats, uh, when you're stable and not moving, you can fit a fair bit of uh, kilos up here. Uh, but then when you're actually moving, it does drop down. But I'll throw some uh, stats in just over here and I'll explain all that for you. Halfway through the uh, filming of the build series, our latest one, we've uh, we got we're using the new camera that we've got. It's, uh, <laughs> the only downside is being in Cairns at this time of year is very hot and the camera doesn't like getting up over a certain temp. So this is what ends up happening. <laughs> cooling down the camera. It's normally you want to do it to yourself, but I'm cooling the camera instead. The poor camera's overheating. I tried to turn it on before and I didn't like it, so I think I'm going to have to keep the hat over it like this when we're recording just so it's happy. We're wearing hats and the camera has to wear hats. Yep. So that's our new camera anyway. We'll show you a bit more of this in later episodes. We might actually do a bit of a sit down and go through all our camera gear because we're getting tons of uh, questions about what we're running, what we're People doing with it. All the time. Yeah, stay tuned for that one. It will be coming soon. We're good? Yeah. You can taste it if you like. I'm Here you go, pro taste it. 